Are you struggling to heal from plantar fasciitis? If so, you're not alone. 10% of people get it, and once you've had it for a year, there's a 45% chance you'll have it for the next 10 years. Yikes. In this video, I'm gonna teach you my 10 laws of plantar fasciitis recovery so you don't have heel pain for the next 10 years. These are 10 concepts that I consider to be very important in recovering from plantar fasciitis based on my research and experience. A lot of these things are things that people are getting wrong for one reason or another. I firmly believe that when you master these 10 laws that you give your body its best chance at healing completely from plantar fasciitis. Most people probably are doing a few of these things and seeing some results from it, but when you're able to add a few more to your recovery plan, your results will improve, and when you're able to get all 10, that's when you really accelerate your healing. The reason for this is that you're creating an optimal environment for your body to heal. All right, let's get started. Law number one, do not ice, take anti-inflammatories, or get cortisone injections. This probably goes against what you've heard you're supposed to do for plantar fasciitis, but take my word for it, these things do not help you heal. Why? Because they are based on the myth that plantar fasciitis is caused by inflammation. Studies have shown that inflammation is not present in chronic plantar fasciitis. Once you've had it for a few weeks uh, or a few months, inflammation is not your problem. All of these things are supposed to help reduce inflammation, but they can actually delay the healing process. Ibuprofen and cortisone shots slow healing and ice reduces blood flow. You need more blood flow to heal. Number two, do not freak out. I don't want to come across as insensitive on this. Yes, your pain is real and debilitating and disturbing, but it's important to find ways to decrease the level of threat from your injury. Your pain intensity does not match the level of damage or severity of the injury, and when you zero in on how bad the pain is, the level of threat perceived by your nervous system goes way up and cranks up the intensity of the pain. It sounds crazy, but your nervous system protects you from threats by giving you pain. So think of your pain as more like a paper cut that will heal and less like a knife that's stabbing you in the heel. Law number three, do not take a single step in the morning without getting some blood flow to your foot. In the morning, your fascia will be stiff and when you step down, it puts more stress on all those little micro tears causing that intense pain. Use a ball, move your toes, pump your feet, do a little stretch, anything to get the fascia warmed up and ready to go. If you don't do this, you put more stress on the fascia and undo some of the healing that your body worked so hard to do overnight. It will also save you a lot of pain in the morning. Law number four, don't wear shoes that mess your feet up. This is hard to summarize in a short video, uh, but the gist of it is don't fall for all the crazy cushioning and arch support type of shoes. Yes, you need some cushion and support, but shoes that are wide enough, especially in the toe box, are very important. Compressing the toes will compromise your blood flow by up to 25%, and too much cushion and support will make your feet weak and create a disconnect between your foot and the ground. It becomes more like a cast that puts the muscles in your foot to sleep. Absolutely get shoes that feel good on your feet, but all the cushion and support should only be used for a short period of time, like you would a cast or a splint, not a forever kind of thing. Shoes don't really heal your feet, so, focus, so the focus should be on things that really do help your feet heal. Law number five, you must improve calf mobility. Calf tightness and limited ankle range of motion caused by calf tightness is one of the main risk factors for developing plantar fasciitis. Most plantar fasciitis sufferers get some relief from doing some sort of calf stretching and mobility work. Stretching is one way to do that, but there are ways to combine stretching and strengthening like the Alfredson's protocol that can be even more effective. Also, part of the problem here is wearing shoes that have a heel lift that chronically shorten the calf and Achilles while you stand and walk. Law number six, you must perform calf massage. Going back to number five, calves are often part of the problem and massaging will go a long way to help loosen the calves and help them become more mobile, but this will also help reduce a lot of your pain. So digging in there with your thumbs, with a ball, with a foam roller, rolling pin, or a combination of these things, preferably before you stretch or do mobility work will help. Some of the tight knots or trigger points in your calf muscles refer pain to the heel, so this can provide some quick relief. Law number seven, you must strengthen your calves and feet. Building strength takes a little time, but this is what truly changes your feet and calves to help them heal, become more resilient, improve blood flow, and restore that natural built-in support. No external support will ever be as good as what you were born with as long as you keep it strong. 
The kind of shoes we, we wear can compromise the strength of our feet, and that's likely the case for most of us after wearing these shoes for years or decades. So any plantar fasciitis recovery program needs to place a heavy emphasis on building strength. Law number eight, you must reduce systemic inflammation. Inflammation in the plantar fascia, in the plantar fascia isn't the main issue, at least not in the way most people think. But systemic inflammation or low level inflammation throughout the whole body will affect how your body heals and how much pain you have. If your body is inflamed, it will not heal well and you will have more pain. A lot of this comes down to making healthy food choices, avoiding sugar, processed foods, and inflammatory fats. A lot of people notice when they eliminate sugar for a period of time, the pain goes away. And when they eat sugar again, the pain comes back. That's just one example. There are many foods that have the same effect and actually many other factors that affect systemic inflammation as well, but you have to get it under control to heal and feel your best. Law number nine, you must get plenty of high quality sleep. A lack of sleep affects every system of the body, every cell, even down to our DNA. Most of us are sleep deprived and not functioning at our best, but we really don't know how impaired we are. Sleep affects how you heal and a single night of sleep uh, deprivation can increase pain by up to 42%. Most of our healing happens while we sleep, and if we're not getting enough sleep or good quality sleep, we're not healing effectively. A lack of sleep keeps your body in a state of chronic stress, and the body goes into kind of a survival mode in which healing is put on the back burner. Good sleep is the foundation of health, and your feet need it to heal. It's the natural painkiller that you literally can't live without. Law number 10, you must not fear going barefoot. We were born to be barefoot, our feet are amazing, and you can go barefoot again. You may have to wait until you're feeling a little better, but building strength, followed by a gradual progression of going barefoot, will help strengthen your feet over time. Our feet were designed to be in contact with the ground. All the joints, ligaments, muscles, arches, are designed to handle just about any kind of terrain. Give it some time, build some strength, and go barefoot in very small doses to begin with, over time your body will handle it better, especially when you're following the 10 laws. These are my 10 laws of plantar fasciitis recovery. Follow them, live by them, and your feet will thank you. These are the principles that the Heal Strong System is founded on. The Heal Strong System is a video coaching program to help you recover from plantar fasciitis. If you'd like more in-depth help from me, go check it out at healstrongsystem.com. There's also a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and stay strong. Mm -hmm.